Today I'll be showing you guys how I am installing this uh, plug and play Megasquirt ECU in my 94 Mazda MX-6 V6 Turbo. I'm going to go through basically everything that you need once you get the parts, everything you need to uh, get it in the car and start you know, driving and boosting like you need to be. So I guess this is Megasquirt basic setup. Uh, Megasquirt is a standalone ECU, which means that it uh, replaces your stock ECU. Uh, you take out the old engine computer and you put in this one, and it basically allows you to do everything you could dream of with a car. You know, you can tune in individual injector pulse widths. You can run basically any size fuel injectors. You can run different size, you know, camshafts. Uh, you can, you know, you have over boost protection and overheat protection, so it'll automatically, you know, shut off the car if it gets too hot. Um, You've got all kinds of tuning and data logging you can do. Uh, it hooks up to a computer. That's that's the main thing. And you you basically all the things your ECU controls, you know, fan speeds, engine throttle response, everything is done by your ECU. And so now it's done by the Megasquirt unit. And um, you tune it yourself on your computer. So you choose all kinds of things. You can do two-step nitrous engagement, you know, methanol, uh, water sprayers, uh, launch control boost by gear like whatever you want basically this is a plug-and-play version which means that it has uh, the mega squirt board has been modified well I guess not modified connected to a set of OEM plugs um, so you can just plug that it'll plug right in and then on the other side is your serial connector it hooks up to the uh, that, you'll have a cable that converts that to USB so you can plug it into your computer that's on the way um, inside there is a little map sensor, so you can get rid of your VAF, your volume airflow sensor on the MX-6, and you just hook up a vacuum line and run it from this instead. Um, this unit is a plug-and-play plug Megasquirt uh, made by Stratified. Um, these things sell new for about $650. Um, the, it's pretty much the same package as the one from DIY Auto-Tune. That most people buy only that one's like eight fifty nine hundred dollars. Um, I it's they're pretty much both the same. You know they're uh, plug and play mega squirts made by Stratified or DIY Auto Tune. I think the DIY Auto Tune one is a little bit better quality, and their website's definitely a lot better. Customer service is phenomenal, but they seem to help you even if you have you know ones made by Stratified. But I got this one used uh, for cheap, probably around four hundred dollars. Um, for the record, I'm going Megasquirt not because there's any problem with my current setup. Uh, the FMU Apexi Neo setup I've been running for about nine months now has had zero problems. You know, I, I love it in every way. It's everything I want. You know, it's everything that you'd really need for my setup. I could run this for years and years on um, 4 PSI, but as one of my friends put it, uh, you know, he said, Kramer, you know, you owe it to your car to get a standalone. You know, it's it's time for, you know, your car deserves it. So I went ahead and searched around, and I saw a good deal on this, and I got it. Um, but just uh, for the record, my current FMU Apexi Neo setup does work perfectly. I get great gas mileage, good airfield ratios everywhere, make a ton of power. But the biggest difference with a Mega Squirt, you know, until you go into crazy tuning stuff, is that it has the ability to tune things, and most importantly, it has timing control, which means when you hit boost, you can retard the timing like you're supposed to, uh, which makes it less likely to knock, uh, which makes it a ton safer. You also get better gas mileage, you know, all kinds of things like that. So um, I'm probably going to put this in and then crank up the boost a little bit more. And uh, funny enough, running 6 or 8 PSI on a Mega Squirt is probably going to end up being safer for long term for my car than the 4 PSI on the FMU setup. But... There is, I'm going on record here, there is nothing wrong with the setup I'm running on my car right now. I would highly recommend that to anybody just getting into tuning who needs to save some money because you could buy all that I have there new for around 300 bucks. versus if you don't find a deal on this, it's around 650 at the cheapest and you got to hook it up to a laptop and do all that kind of stuff you might not want to do, but the FMU and Apexi Neo does work very well for my car. So the first thing you're going to have to do with a... Uh, Standalone ECU is to wire in a wideband O2 sensor. 
undo the four screws on the edges of the unit and pull the uh, aluminum top casing off of the uh, unit to expose the boards. You're going to find the little section for the extra O2 sensor, which is the second one in there. And um, then you're going to also have to find this little jumper cable thing, a little jumper pin boot harness thing. So I'm trying to get that to focus, but this one that I'm going to manipulate here, you're basically going to put the wire in that little slot after it's stripped and then you're going to tighten it down in that one that I'm moving right there. And that is for the extra O2 sensor, so you're going to put your um, wideband O2 sensor signal wire in there, whatever one is designated by your wideband, and then you're going to crimp it down in there. That's the easy way to connect it, and then make sure to run it through that grommet so it comes out the side. So I've got it run from the extra O2 sensor plug, nice and tightened down, and run out through the grommet. This board is also where all of the uh, sort of 12 volt switch options that they have for you here. So that's if you want to control, you know, a boost controller, extra coolant sensors, you know, nitrous, whatever you want. Um, and so you're going to do that and then just change the setting in the computer for that. But you run it out through this grommet so you can put the lid on, it's not crimped in anywhere. The next step is to find the J3 pin. It's in that position there. And we're going to move it, just pull it out, swap it over. So it's like that. And what that basically does is it changes it from uh, having the Mega Squirt plug and play Mega Squirt reading the stock O2 sensors for its uh, readings from the car and changes it so that it uh, is now reading the wideband that you just wired into there. And so you're just going to leave that and then you're going to wire that into the sensor from your wideband. So this is it all put back together. And the only difference is now it'll read a wideband when you wire it into that. The wideband that I use is the Innovate Motorsports um, MTXL wideband. I got it uh, online for around 150 bucks new. Um, it has all the components, you know, the gauge, the uh, wideband controller, the O2 sensor. It uses the Bosch 17014 wideband sensor, which is uh, the LSU 4.2. And according to the manual for the Innovate MTX-L, which I think is the same as the LC1, um, it's the yellow wire that you want to use, the yellow wire that is left over after it's installed. Uh, that's the uh, 0 to 5 volt air fuel ratio uh, sensor output. So that's what we're going to connect to the Mega Squirt. So inside this little corner section where all the uh, gauges and their wires run to, I have run it up over this thing. Those wires are for something else. You can sort of see it right there. That's because it's not pulled tight. It's up over there. And it goes in through that little hole into this section, which is where the uh, Mega Squirt ECU is going to sit. Um, to install the Mega Squirt, it's going to sit right where the OEM ECU sits, which is right behind this panel here. So you're going to start by unscrewing the, uh, the shift knob. With the shift knob off, I found it's best to do this when the car is in fourth gear. And um, then you're just going to be able to reach here, use a screwdriver or whatever, and just pull, and it pops out of those little clips. And then you can work on getting it out with the e-brake up. And behind here, there is a little plug that attaches to the back of this. A light bulb that goes here and a light bulb that goes behind this thing as well. You just turn um, uh, you turn the two light bulbs and they come out and then you uh, unplug the cigarette lighter thing and then you go ahead and pull this out. Okay. And then that's out and then this is where your ECU is. Um, you're not going to have all these wires. This is from the uh, Apexi Neo install that I did. And uh, so ignore all those brightly colored wires. But back here, this plug, the yellow plug, is what's going to plug into your Mega Squirt. 
and the mega squirt's going to sit right where that one does. So inside here, there are a couple of screws you have to undo. There's one there and one on the other side. You undo those bolts and then unplug your ECU and you can slide that out of the car. So with the ECU out, you can put the mega squirt in its place. So I slid the mega squirt in there, making sure all the things that need to be plugged in are left out, especially the USB cable. Um, now you're just going to plug it in and just connect the connectors and the um, vacuum hose to where they need to go. So this is a little more messy because all these red wires from the Apexi Neo previously, which is no longer hooked up. Um, but that's pretty much it plugged in. You got your uh, wideband wire and the this is just a wire that I have to the clutch pedal for two-step. Um, and then the vacuum cable is into the thing and the USB cable is out here, which means we should be able to plug this into the mega square and start the car and the rest should be software tuning stuff. It's good to sort of get familiar with uh, the layout of your tuner studio. Um, I do recommend using <clears throat> a like base tune from DIY Auto Tune or <clears throat> from Stratified, depending on um, where your unit's from or whatever. But there's basic, you know, just being able to navigate things like change your settings and stuff. Um, this is something that's really important. All these, you know, presets are going to be there um, on your base tune. They're also available on the website. I'll probably post a picture at the end of this video, um, but this is important. Um, it's important to sync the timing with your actual engine to the timing um, that you have in your mega squirt. So what you're going to use is you're going to go to in here and you're going to set it to fixed timing at 10 degrees. Um, and then you're going to push burn and you're going to power cycle the ECU. Then you're going to go um, and use a timing light on the actual engine. Don't adjust anything with the distributor or anything because uh, you're not going to turn the distributor to adjust the timing anymore, but you're going to, um, with this being at fixed timing, that's like it being in diagnostic mode. So you're going to take that and uh, you're going to point the timing light at the crank and you're going to see where it's at. And then um, when you get to that, if it's not at 10 exactly, you're going to change this number. Uh, this should start at 60 and then you're going to just change it until it brings the timing mark to 10 degrees um, and then at that point you can burn it to the ECU and um, for, for mine it was 71 so I just you know kept changing it in little increments until the timing mark was exactly at 10 degrees and then you burn it to the ECU and then you change the fixed timing to use table and um, click burn again and that sends it to the ECU and now you're using your timing table that you set up um, in your ignition setting, so you're using this table now as opposed to just being held at a constant 10. Um, that, that's how you make sure that the, uh, you know, when the mega squirt thinks it's at 10 degrees, it's actually at 10 degrees uh, physically in the unit. You're adjusting the cam timing and adjusting the uh, trigger, uh, the tooth angle is the same thing as, you know, turning your distributor um, like you would if you were running an OEM ECU. So that, that's how you get your ignition timing dead on and then everything else is done through the mega squirt. I don't have this hooked up to the car right now but you're going to go through basically all of these and calibrate them. Um, you're going to calibrate the throttle position sensor um, by just you know you're going to push get current and um, with the your foot off of the gas pedal and then you're going to floor the gas pedal um, obviously with the engine off and you're going to push get current and that's going to be able to tell the uh, mega square when you're at wide open throttle and when you're not. Um, then you're going to go under here and the one that I'm using, this this is what I had some trouble with, but um, it was originally set at uh, the 6400, 6, but I changed it to the 4250 um, just because that seemed to make sense to me, the, the 250, because I looked at the 3 bar is 300, so I figured the 250 would be 2.5 bar, which is what my unit comes with. So. That's why I changed that too, and it fixed the problem of um, with the engine off and the mega squirt on. It was reading 130 kPa's, which would be boost, but it should only be at 100 a atmosphere because that's atmospheric pressure. Um, so I changed that, and then I had to retune the fuel table and stuff. Um, then I had to push unlock calibrations, but um, then the thermoresistors. 
<clears throat> I haven't calibrated the one for the coolant temperature, um, but the one for the air temperature, those are the settings that I'm using. They're um, Technically, the settings should be the same for the Miata and the 626 and the MX-6, but otherwise the it's you know these numbers are just slightly off um, but it doesn't really really make too much of a difference uh, especially when you're at you know negative four degrees you know I live in Florida so it doesn't get that cold here um, and then calibrating the air fuel ratio table is when you need to pick whatever your wide band is and um, you know make that change there uh, I had to go under a custom linear wide band and set these for my Innovate MTXL, um, just because it, it was close, but it was about a full point off, so I was able to just change these numbers a little bit until the wideband um, reading matched the mega squirt reading. Um, you know, trust the one in the gauge itself, and then you change this one to make sure the mega squirt and the one in the gauge are pretty much the same. So that's what I did on that. Um, when you're just looking around at things and uh, you don't know what they do, a lot of times they have a little arrow next to them, you can click that. And uh, for this one, like incorporate target air fuel ratio, um, basically it's telling you that if you have it set as uh, include air fuel ratio target, then your fuel table is going to read um, from your wideband, which is cool, unless your wideband fails. Um, and it's going to use that sort of as the fuel table, use your air fuel ratio table as your um, fuel table. Um, with the air fuel ratio not included, the air fuel ratio table is for reference only, and your fuel table um, takes full control. That's the way that I have it set, but um, basically all these little things, uh, they'll have little arrows next to them and uh, little question marks, and you can set, also you can write yourself little notes next to each one, which is pretty cool. So the first thing you need to do as far as uh, setting up your tune stuff before you can start the car is going to be uh, making your three tables. You have an ignition table, that is your um, spark timing. Um, and so you can pull this off of uh, you know, a base map or get it from a friend or copy mine if you want. Um, this is sort of, I haven't really adjusted anything in here. This is just a safe map for me. Um, anything over 100 is boost. Um, so around 130, 140 is four PSI. Um, etc. Uh, then you need to make your air fuel ratio table if you're using auto tune. Um, this is pretty simple. This is these are your targets uh, that when you use auto tune, um, say if you're at you know 2,000 RPMs and you're at you know wide open throttle, you're going to be at a 12 air fuel ratio. That's your target. Or you know this is your cruising, so you want to be around 14.7. Um, in that area, but you'll see when you're driving the car, there's going to be a little dot that moves uh, showing which cells you're in. This is your air fuel ratio target table, and that will write you a fuel table um, while you're using auto tune. So basically, uh, this is your fuel values, and so if you know 70, 69, 70 right there isn't giving you the air fuel ratio that you want when you plug into your wideband, the auto tune will change these values in these cells until the wideband reads what you want it to read in the air fuel ratio table. And that's sort of, that's all Autotune does is it really just writes you the full fuel table, but um, I would recommend once you're in Autotune you can select multiple cells and you can um, lock them. Uh, there's not an option on it here, but you, you lock them and so you, I'd recommend doing that on your uh, sort of this section of cells where you're going to be idling at because autotune will just change them every single time because you spend a lot of time there and it's you know different factors and stuff but um, just once you get that where you want it just lock it so the autotune doesn't change it it's gonna take some time um, to get it get everything exactly where you want it to be um, but this fuel table is really what's gonna you know make the difference um, for me it was breaking up whenever I would get anywhere near boost or it was actually breaking up everywhere after I set my um, my air flow sensor at the right, uh, my map sensor set it to the right one, it was breaking up everywhere. So what I did is I just took and selected like all these cells and just changed them to like 80 or 90, something really rich. And so it ran really rich, but it then the auto tune would pull fuel out, which is better than it being lean and trying to add fuel. So 
Um, if you're doing that, you know, it's a good tip to just, you know, make everything really rich, like make the numbers high and then pull them down rather than the other way around because then you can cause damage and stuff. Uh, here you can see what I was talking about, about locking these. So basically when you start the car, this is, you know, the old dot's going to move around and show you where you are, you know, depending on your RPM and how much pressure, how much on the throttle you are. But basically I went in here and after that was set where I wanted it, I locked it. Um, by just, you know, selecting it and then you push lock selected cells um, and that makes it so that the auto-tune cannot change that cell. And so I did that with these ones just so I have a rock solid idle and it's not trying to change it every time. Um, you can go in and change the fuel cells manually um, from your fuel table. Uh, you can go in and, you know, set each one of these individually. Um, that's sort of the old way of doing it, but an auto-tune gets you a really pretty good base map um, and uh, so you, you basically just set your fuel table a little bit high make sure your ignition table and your air fuel ratio targets are where you want them to be and then you just drive like normal and it will write you a good fuel table so here goes the first start attempt the neutral fuck yes okay I still have to calibrate my wideband but that is a running mega squared. Fuck yeah. So um, there are a couple ways to do this, but after you've uh, got the mega squared running the car and you have your basic air fuel ratio table set up where you want it to be, um, depending on what the uh, you know what your uh, pressure in the engine is, then you can go to the tune analyze live thing you'd have to pay for this but you can start to auto tune so there we go wait for the wide band to heat up so it's at 10.7 gonna push start auto tune and it's going to write us a fuel table to match the air fuel ratio table so you'll see those numbers those cells it's touching right there are changing they're dropping and it should be bringing my air fuel ratio up as it changes those to be uh, to what the air fuel ratio in the table is supposed to be. As you can see, it's changing those you know, numbers. It says they're correcting table. And you can do this while you're driving too, and it'll basically It'll go all over that map and change all those numbers in your fuel table to uh, make it what you want it to be. You can see as I uh, press on the throttle a little bit. See it's changing those so that the air fuel ratio is good. And so you'll just drive normally and it'll write you a fuel table. So that is a basic install of Megasquirt and basic setup. Um, you know, each car does run differently. Each car will require different little changes, but uh, just the thing I can stress the most is just get, you know, familiar with your Tuner Studio because once you get in here, you can adjust little tiny things and just, you know, feel the car, feel what it's doing, um, and then you can tell, you know, what it needs, what it wants you to change. Obviously, you know, if you're on the throttle and the engine sounds like it's exploding like don't just hold it there um, but then you can just play around with your tuner studio and just change things the one thing I would caution against changing is going to be your ignition table um, you don't want to like if you advance the ignition like crazy high in some places um, it's just gonna you know your engine could just blow up so just uh, now you got my expert set up just play around with tuner studio you can um, you know, mess with your launch control and all those things and everything like that and have a fun time. So overall, that's pretty much, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I haven't really messed with too many things, but I've just got a basic uh, setup with Megasquirt running right now. Um, yeah, the most important thing is just, just set your timing. Uh, mechanically, make sure, you, you know, your Megasquirt is synced with the actual car on timing. Uh, make sure your spark table is not too advanced, and um, make sure that your fuel table is decent and your air fuel ratio table, uh, those three tables basically. 
Then I just copied the settings from the DIY Autotune uh, website because they've got a they've got the settings there, which I'll probably post at the end of this video. And um, I mean, pretty much that just uh, I just got the Megascore plugged it in and ran the lines, and um, it's driving pretty well.